All right, in our Adobe class, we've gone through now the first three modules. We've gotten through both exercises, and now we get to the actual compositing unit. It's going to relate a lot to what we did in Unit 2, where we're image mining, finding good reference, then blending it together into an original composition. But this time we're going to do it not with just black line art. We're going to do it with fantasy landscapes. So this is going to overlap with the, the field of concept design or pre-production design for video games, for animation, for feature films, for special effects, for comic books, for illustration. Concept design is when you kind of make up worlds, right? And when you do it with the setting, it often has to do with creating landscapes. Landscapes need to have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. They need to feel like they can be activated within. So if you can say just a picture of pure blue sky is a landscape, but it's not very helpful in terms of telling you anything about that setting. So like you see here, and we'll see in these past examples, this is unit four. It starts with a new aspect of the class, which is kind of our journaling aspect. And this is question of the day one. And all you need to do to get, get credit for this is to answer this question in your post that you share with the class with more than 100 words that are on topic, right? So what are the advantages and disadvantages of digital raster which is bitmap or pixel-based artwork over traditional artwork, right? Paintings or sculptures. What are the dangers? So here is a digital composite image, right? And I, this is not one of mine. This is not one of my students. This was one th through Pixabay. And it has a face here in this kind of tree trunk texture. It made this tree trunk pregnant for some reason. It has an escalator going up to this house up in this tree, all in a field. I do like how the light on the, sh the shadows in the field match the lighting condition. There are some good things, there are some challenging things. That's a digital piece of art. That can be immediately copied, redistributed, sent to everyone for free. That's an advantage and in some ways a disadvantage. Here is a landscape done on rice, rice paper. And all traditional inks and watercolor on rice paper. What we're seeing is a digital image of that thing, but that traditional landscape is much harder to copy or distribute, right? Except as a digital image. So just kind of thinking of the, the positive and negatives. If you have the computer and the program or access to it, this has no materials cost, except for maybe the electricity it takes to, to make it, right? Though if you sign up for a painting class, a rice paper landscape painting class, you have to buy sumi ink, you have to buy watercolors, rice paper itself is pretty expensive per sheet. And there's a, a failure cost or a waste cost for every time you want to start over. It's not easy to erase ink or watercolor. Whereas with digital, you could always replace it. So these are the kind of things you can think about in answering this question. All of us have different experiences. And I want your own points of view. I also give you a link back to our intro slides so you can be reminded what raster imaging is, how it's used, especially in terms of compositing, which is our first unit, and all the AI stuff that's going on now. That can inform. But writing 100 words, you should already have that much in your mind as an opinion already about advantages and disadvantages of digital over traditional art. And we're talking about raster here, not vectors. We'll be talking about vectors later. So getting back into pixel-based raster art, how do we start this project? First, we have to pick a theme. I am not giving you any default theme here, except that it needs to be a landscape that uses at least five different references. And you put it all together in a way that seems believable to the logic of that landscape, that world. So you can alter physics, you can alter anything, as long as it all feels believable within that one scene. So it can be any concept you can imagine. What it can't be is five different types of landscapes all put together. One that's from Looney Tunes, one that's from uh, Roger Rabbit, one that's from photography, one that's from space painting. Just because none of those will feel believably 
in the same space. So we want to avoid kind of a sticker sheet. What I do is, and what I'll demonstrate, is you want to pick your theme, like this one was uh, a high desert or glacier mountains or the one I passed around as a print, post-apocalyptic Seattle. Um, this was a mixture of Greek marble sculptures with Arizona landscape and a sunset. This one has crystals and a moon, all this stuff. It could be anything. You can pick the time of day. You can pick the kind of atmosphere. You can have floating islands. It can be spacey, all this stuff. You can combine big things and little things. I like to use a lot of food reference. That can be fun. But you want it to all feel believably together, whether it's portrait format like this or landscape format like these. You know, taller than they are wide or wider than they are tall. But we start with a sketch. So there are more examples in the, in the class Imgur. In order to see them, you do have to log in, which you'll find under links. I don't put that on the public YouTubes. And you'll see the sketches. I ask that you sketch them both in landscape format and portrait format. Just really loose sketches. It's a, a way of how you might want to arrange elements, right? And, and you might vary from that sketch when you actually put it together. Because remember, these are all other people's pixels. But they had a city here in the foreground. And then in putting it together, realized, no, I need to put that city in the middle ground and then have something that leads to it. So they added in this bridge. We also don't want anything that's called a figurative element in these landscapes, because these need to work as backgrounds for later assets that we bring in. So a figurative element is obviously any people that are living and walking around. We want to get rid of those, because we'll be adding in our own creatures, any animals. And then it gets a little trickier. You don't want to have flames in your landscape, because flames we expect to be moving. Right? So they are a figurative aspect. Really, technically, we don't want to have moving water. Yeah, and that's why I use this example. That's a figurative aspect. So when we animate it later, not only would you have to animate the character in the landscape, you'd have to animate the water, which could be really cool, but it's a lot of extra work. So just think in terms of it being like a backdrop for a play that will be a believable setting for things that we put in front of it or within it. You can use man-made objects for your landscape, right? You can use kind of broken vehicles or vehicles that are unused, as long as they're not meant to be moving vehicles, right? Because that would be a figurative element. It'd be weird for that to be stuck in place. Uh, the hard thing with man-made elements like roads, vending machines, buildings, is they all have their own perspective. And because they're man-made and they're basically boxes, we'll it's, it's tougher to manipulate those in compositing because you have to get the perspectives to all work. But there are tricks to do that. It can be an interior, it can be an exterior, but you need to have three layers of depth. So in something like underground or in a cave, you want to think of foreground, middle ground, background. Some past instructor examples, you know, deserts, mountains and glaciers, Oh, like ruins of things, ruins of buildings, ruins of animals. They can be really good kind of touchstones because they might have scale to them. All right. I asked my, my sons driving them to, to high school this morning what I should do, and they said you should do a gothic jungle. So I think they were thinking of Mike Mignola, Hellboy, gothic settings that he likes for his comics. They're very, very moody. So that's going to be kind of my inspiration for this section. Yeah, I don't see a lot of good good images that show kind of the ruined churches or anything. No, it, it will be good. It's just going to be, it'll be challenging. But here, here's a good template. You know, that's the kind of thing they're thinking. So you can have, and Mike McNoll is great. We'll talk about him when we do spot illustration and digital coloring. But um, this is very different than making it kind of a believable concept art. 